Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Weber Curry, Manager of Clinical Services at Ascension Counseling Center. You're watching Ascension Counseling Center's video newsletter, where we talk about the services we offer and how you can benefit from them. Thanks for joining us. In this episode, we'll talk about fathers and the important role they have in their children's lives. Suzanne Hamilton, Director of Ascension Counseling Center, is here with valuable information to help dads build solid foundations for their children and to experience positive relationships with them. Please stay with us for the next half hour or so. Our newsletter begins right after this message. Ascension Parish, a parish steeped in tradition. It's a place where generations of families have continued to enjoy a lifestyle that centers on community living and community celebration. It's a place where we care about each other and we care about ourselves. For more than 50 years, the Ascension Counseling Center has continued the tradition of helping individuals and families change behaviors and change lives. The Ascension Counseling Center. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Hello, Suzanne, how are you today? Lisa, I'm doing well. Good. How are you doing? I'm great. Excited about our topic this morning. Um, we're going to talk once again, this time about the role of fathers. Yes, we're going to be talking about the importance of fathers in their children's lives. And we'll talk a little bit even, you know, it's important for fathers who are not living in the home as well to be informed and to, to continue to have a role in their children's lives. Mm -hmm. So this will be for fathers who are in the home, fathers who are out of the, uh, of the home as well. Great, great. Well, let's get it started. Um, you say the father's role is significant in a child's life. Yes, huh. and so one of the things we want to talk about, just to kind of set the stage for this morning, is the, what happens, the impact of, on children whenever fathers are absent okay. in their families. And uh, there's been some research on the important role of fathers in their children's life put on by the Annie E. Casey Foundation, conducted a survey of, of fatherless children. And what they found is that children without a father are nine times more likely to drop out of school wow. than children who have a father uh, active in their life. Um, children without a father are less likely to succeed academically and professionally than in adulthood. Okay. than children with so a father. So it not only affects them as a kid, it follows them into adulthood. Yes, okay. absolutely. 80% uh, <coughs> of adolescents in psychiatric hospitals come from fatherless homes. So it, it shows that there's a strong impact there on, on their emotional well-being right. when the father is out of the home. They are two times more likely to commit suicide than children whose fathers are active in their lives. Okay. 70% of teen pregnancies happen in fatherless children. So it's very important the role that they play right. as well. 90% uh, of all homeless and runaway children are fatherless. There's no mm. father in their lives at all. That covers almost all runaways. It, yes, it does, yeah. Okay. And then fatherlessness is also the best predictor of poverty in a family. And of course, poverty in and of itself has a lot of negative outcomes for, for children exactly. and adults yeah, as well. Yeah, a lot of negative correlates related to poverty. And one of the things we're seeing is now more than ever is the fact that there are more women at the head of their households. Yes. So, and yeah. so we don't want to imply that, that you know, that, that the women can't fill some of these roles. Exactly. You know, if the father is not there or if there's someone else who's not taking the role of father, sometimes it's a brother or a, a a uncle, uncle or, or someone cousin, else in the family, right. extended family, who exactly. can fulfill that role of father. And I, right. I know someone now who's kind of raising his his mm -hmm. uh, nieces and nephews exactly. uh, because the father is, his brother is not really involved in their life. Yeah. He's around but not really involved and so someone else has stepped up in that mm -hmm. family to kind of help shape the children and raise right. the children. Which is equally as important even if the biological father isn't there it's just as important as family member, family friend step into that role yes. and help out. Yeah, and it, so it doesn't have to be the biological father. Mm -hmm. And so that's an excellent point. So I'm glad you brought that mm -hmm. up. But someone who can fill this role for, for children. Right. 
Okay, okay. So tell us some things that fathers can actually do to build that healthy, solid foundation of a relationship with their kids. One of the things is making sure that you're speaking positive words and eliminating negative messages. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important that fathers are, are complimenting their children, mm -hmm. pointing out to them what they see good and positive in their lives, mm -hmm. talking about what they like about them, uh, what their strengths are, telling them what they've done right, uh, mm -hmm. telling them that you can achieve anything that you set your mind to achieving. Right. Um, so positive messages like that, uh, letting them know that they can be successful in life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, we've, we've had clients come in and they've said, nobody has ever told me that I could be right. successful in my life. You're the first person to ever say that. Yeah. They have and an it, aha moment. They, yes, they do. And so fathers <laughs> can be very important in, in playing that role for them. Um, fathers also need to be aware not to say anything negative, not to call children names mm -hmm. like stupid or stubborn right. or any kind of labels like that, um, avoiding cursing at them. Sometimes yeah. fathers do that or adults do that, uh, not tell, telling them that they're a failure, that they're a disappointment or that they're sorry that they had them, those kind of things. Right. So the words always need to be positive, life-giving, supportive, nurturing, and eliminating all of the negative languages and ne negative uh, mm -hmm. labels and negative comments about them and their right. abilities. Because those words stick with kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard parents say, well, I cursed, but I didn't curse them. But you're cursing at them. And so it's really in the eye of the beholder. If that child, if you notice in their face that they get really sad and really down and they shrink down in the seat when you're cursing at them, it's affecting them. Mm -hmm. And that's something we need to think about and change our languages. Yeah, and we. I knew a, a a lady, and she said she. They were just, you know, doing like women do sometimes, and mm -hmm. complaining about their mothers. And mm -hmm. her son was in the back seat with his hands over his ears. He didn't want right. to listen to all of that negativity. Again, probably. And it, yeah, it wasn't <laughs> even directed to him. But they are sensitive to the words that we say. Right. Uh, they are listening, and it does affect them. And so, yes. and it's nothing better than saying, especially if they hear you saying positive things to someone else about mm -hmm. them when they're not even there and right. they overhear that or that gets back to them about oh the the wonderful things that yeah. they said because the negative things will get back to them too so it's very oh, important yes. even when they're not there to, to be saying positive things right. about them to other people exactly it goes back to we speak out what we'd like to see happen mm -hmm. so if we speak positive words about our children and over our children then we can expect that behavior to follow yeah there's more right. and, and if we call them stupid and and you know, unsuccessful, then we can expect to see that as well. Right. because the self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, they'll they'll kind of internalize that and believe that exactly. about themselves. Because if your own parent doesn't see value in you, who else is going to? Yes. So it's very important that fathers and mothers take that mm -hmm. role of being the child's uh, encourager, nurturer, yeah. supporter. Exactly. Be the advocate for our mm -hmm. children. Yeah, yes. I always like to think of it. Let's catch our kids doing something right yes. instead of focusing on wrong. And, and sometimes we do get focused on what they're doing wrong. And even if they're doing something wrong, there's, there's one thing that we can find that they, they did right. well. And the more we focus on complimenting them on that, the mm -hmm. more uh, That's they'll the behavior they're repeat engaging. that behavior. Yes. Yes, so. Definitely. Okay. And you, you say fathers are responsible for teaching kids morals and values. So let's talk about morals right. and values. Morals, you know, children need to hear from their, their uh, fathers um, about what needs to guide their behavior. So morals mm -hmm. and, and values, um, ethics, that kind of guides our behavior and mm -hmm. we live our life according to the values and the morals that we have. Right. Uh, so it's very important that <coughs> fathers teach their children what the f are the values in their family. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if it's, it doesn't matter, um, it, it might be just a value in that family, something right. that's more important than it is in other families. Exactly. And it's very important that fathers communicate those values to their children mm -hmm. so that they can um, line their behaviors up with According that. The, um, yeah. You know, it's really important that um, fathers kind of look at their own values and morals mm -hmm. because that is going to be what they're 
mm-hmm. teaching their children whether they intend to or not. Exactly. And so it's not a question of do as I say, don't mm-hmm. do as I do, you know. It's, right. it's really an important that if you're going to, the, the way we teach values and morals is mm-hmm. by living them. At by and by example, mm-hmm. and so in addition to our words, so yeah. very important that that fathers look at what their values are for their family mm-hmm. and for behavior, and that could be things like wisdom, justice, integrity, right. faithfulness, honesty, hard work. Mm-hmm. All of those are values that we want to teach our children, right. and so if children are going to live their lives by the values that we think are important, mm-hmm. it's very important that we communicate them and that we live them as yeah. well. They have to be congruent. Yes. Both have to um, come together and kids have to see that. I think it is so important because morals and values, as you say, it teaches us right from wrong. Mm-hmm. It guides the decisions we make. And if we know our family's morals and values and we've seen them in action in our parents, so when it's our turn to make a decision, we can think, wait a minute, I do have a guide. This is what mom and dad said. This is what mom and dad has done. And you can make the best possible decision. Yeah, you can teach children, like say for instance, the value of honesty. And I I knew someone Mm who, um, his daughter had just started driving and they just got new tires on the car. Mm -hmm. And she hit the curb and and busted the new tire. (laughs) So she went back to the tire store and she told them what happened. When she got home, her father scolded her and said, you shouldn't have told them you did that. You should have told them the tire just burst, you know, right. and that so he didn't want it. So you can talk to children about honesty exactly. for a long time, but then mm-hmm. when an instance comes up when it's needed, if you tell them, oh, you shouldn't have been honest, then yeah. you're teaching them something different than what you've told Definitely. them to do. That's very important that we live and experience this, the same things that right. our, our words are that's saying. A, that's a great point because kids then will go into the world confused. Mm-hmm. I don't know what is best in this situation because dad told me one thing all my life and when it was time to use that, he did something differently. Yeah. So that's, that's a challenge. That's very interesting. Okay, so we also need to talk about loving each child individually because sometimes we hear our parents say, oh, I love all my children the same. Mm-hmm. That's not really beneficial, so let's well, talk about yes, it. Yes, and you know, it's really important that we identify each child is unique. Mm-hmm. And so if we're trying to love them the same, they're not going to experience it in the same way. Right. Uh, so it's, you know, we talk about, we've talked here about the different love languages and how people need experience yeah. love in different ways. Some people need <coughs> to hear I love you. Some people need for you to spend time with them. And so it's really important that mm-hmm. fathers know their children individually, what their right. likes and dislikes are. And if you're going to, to spend time with your kids, you might say, I'm going to have uh, you know, an outing with, with each child once a mm-hmm. month or every couple of months, you're not going to do the same thing with them. Right. You, uh, going to a movie is not going to please every child the same way. Exactly. And so you need to know what they are like as individuals and kind of um, mm-hmm. support that and right. relate to them in that way. Yeah, so. show them that love <clears throat> in the way they respond best mm-hmm. to that love. And yeah, when I read it, I thought love languages, exactly, knowing our kids love languages. And some kids, it's as simple as giving them a hug, rubbing their head. Other kids need to hear it verbally, but it's so important that we know what our kids need. Yeah, knowing what, what makes your child happy and what makes your child mm-hmm. sad, um, what their friends are like, what TV shows they like, right. and, and being able to, when you know that, it's better able you're better able to focus in with them and give them what they need. Exactly. I mean, I I just thought about an example from my own life. Um, My daughters love Harry Potter. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but I remember they consistently asked, would you watch Harry Potter with me? And I'd say, no, I don't really like that. And then it dawned on me the second time. This is important to them. Mm -hmm. So I sat and I watched Harry Potter. Well, lo and behold, I'm a fan now. So (laughs) you really don't know until you do it. But it was important to them, and it would make them feel loved that I sat there and spent that time with them. And that's very important because even, you know, for a lot of families, their time is very limited. And Mm -hmm. sometimes parents will want to just sit and give their child what they want to give them right. and that's not what the child exactly. needs and so treating them as an individual is an excellent way 
uh, to nurture them and, mm -hmm. and to support them and to help right. them to grow. And in the end, we all feel better. You feel a much loving environment. Yes. So what's given is reciprocated back to you. Absolutely. Okay. And yes. Great. So we're not only responsible for loving our children individually, but we're responsible for setting them up for the best possible success in life. And so that's where helping them acquire a trade or a business or a skill becomes important. Yes, and you know, we want to teach children that work is not a burden, right. but work can be something that's productive and rewarding. Mm -hmm. And so fathers are, can, are really responsible for teaching children an appropriate work ethic. Okay. Again, this is something you need to check in your own self uh -huh. uh, to make sure that you have a good work ethic right. so that you can teach that to your children. Um, has to do with giving them chores around the house mm -hmm. and letting them be responsible for things. And um, that can carry over into their schoolwork as well. Having right. them be responsible to get their mm -hmm. homework done is a way of teaching them a solid work ethic. Right. Um, it, when it comes to chores, you know, they need to see that it's important what they do, mm -hmm. that it's important to help the family function. Right. If everyone's not doing all of the tasks that need to be done, the family doesn't function, the household doesn't right. function. And it's that way at work as mm -hmm. well. And so whenever they begin to see that they have an important role to play mm -hmm. in keeping the family functioning, then they'll see their work ethic that way as right. well. They'll a better able to see how important their role is in the workplace right. and how important it is that they pull their weight and do what they need to do. Yeah. And so sometimes it's about teaching children how to do a task. Mm -hmm. So it might be take out the trash, but you might show them the best way to do that, you know, right. because you can do that with everything neatly packaged up, or you can do that with, you know, leaving little breadcrumbs uh -huh. of trash <laughs> behind you. Exactly. Uh, so it could be that, that you need to teach them and train them how to do the task, and then have the patience to watch them master it. Exactly. And so it's sometimes it's, it's just quicker to do something yourself, and that's maybe okay in the short term, but in the long term, it's not. So right. we need to give the children some tasks to do and let them do it even though it takes them twice as long as it would right. take you yeah. because that's how they learn a work ethic. Okay. Yeah, because if we take over and do it, then that tells them you're not good enough. Yes. You can't get this done. Mm -hmm. And that makes them afraid to even try things. And I think a lot of times when we're talking to parents and they'll say, well, he or she doesn't do their chores. I give it to them every day. It's on the chart, on the refrigerator, and they still won't do it. And so then when we say, did you ever teach your children how to do that chore? Well, no, they should know that. Well, how? How if you never taught them? Then you bring the kids in and you say, your mom wanted you to take this trash out, the, um, Trash is picked up on Mondays and Thursdays, so Sunday nights it needs to be out and Wednesday night. And this is how you need to bring it out and place it. Well, Mom never told me that. She just told me, or Dad just told me, take the trash out. I didn't know all the details. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that meant cleaning the trash can afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we show the kids and, like you said, be patient and let them learn the task. Really master it and then they'll be ready for the next step. And then, you know, you un understanding too that um, mm -hmm. as children grow older, then they're a capable of learning more and taking right. on more responsibility. So there is a balance between teaching them what needs to be done and understanding that they're, mm -hmm. what their abilities are. Exactly. And not having them try to master some task that's above their age level right. to be able exactly. to. Exactly, because so that can teach. be detrimental yes. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so know, know what your child is capable of, make sure the tests are age appropriate and match up with their skills, and then being patient and letting them master yes. it. Yes. Great. Okay, so as fathers, they should also support their kids financially. Yeah, and we talked about the statistics about mm -hmm. poverty, and children <coughs> need their parents or their fathers to support them financially. Right. And as we mentioned earlier, you know, fatherlessness is the best predictor of po poverty. Mm -hmm. And so fathers are responsible for this, even if they're not living in the home. Right. And I understand that this is difficult for a lot of fathers because mm -hmm. you give your, uh, your children's mother a lump sum for child support. Right. And you no don't necessarily have any control over how that's going to be spent 
or what's going to happen to that. Mm -hmm. And you know, you still have a lot of your own emotional issues that you're working with right. with the mother, and there's a lot of you know maybe tension or distrust because mm -hmm. you know you've had a failed relationship. So of course, yeah. there's going to be some challenges there, yeah. but it's not appropriate to withhold finances from your child because of what the mother might do or because of how you feel about her. Right. They really need support even if mm -hmm. you're not in the home. Right. They definitely need support because a lack of support will affect how they live, how they're able to reach their goals or even get to school and be dressed appropriately. Kids who go to school hungry, we know, are less likely to succeed because they can't concentrate. So everybody's support is needed. And it would behoove the father and the mother to work together for the best interests of the child. So you can't let your emotions get in the way. You still have to take care of your financial responsibility. And, and if children are living in a situation of, of want or lack or poverty, then you know they know that and they right. worry. Children worry about what's going to happen next and how they're mm -hmm. going to make ends meet. Even right. though that really is the responsibility of the parents, mm -hmm. children know. They, they when, sense it. Yes. Yeah. And so we're putting a lot of worry and concern on children that mm -hmm. they really shouldn't have at that age. Exactly. They should be allowed to be children yes. without the concerns about where my next meal is going to come from. Mm -hmm. So both parents need to step up and be financially responsible, regardless of whose custody the child is Absolutely. actually in or living yes. with. So that's really important. And it's a, it can be a challenging task. We want you guys to know we recognize that, yes. but it doesn't take away your responsibility. That's correct. Okay. And so finally, we'll talk about discipline, which yes. is always a hot topic. <laughs> it's always a hot topic. When we talk about reinforcing discipline behavior, I'm not really talking right at this point about um, punishment. Okay. We're really talking about how you train your ch child to conduct themselves according mm -hmm. to the morals and values that you have in your life. It, it kind of can be thought of as pruning the things from their lives mm -hmm. that hinder them or that harm them and okay. encouraging things that are healthy. So anything that's undesirable, you're trying to prune that out of their life. Mm -hmm. And anything that's that's healthy, we're trying to encourage that. So okay. just for the purposes of what we're talking about right now, that's what we mean by, by mm -hmm. discipline, not so much right. punishment or anything right. like that. Um, and so when children, um, you know, sometimes they're exhibiting troubling behaviors, mm -hmm. and so it's up to parents to kind of set some boundaries for them. Right. And, and sometimes parents don't like to do this. We like to be their best friend. We're afraid mm -hmm. of rejection, especially if there's two separate households, and you don't mm -hmm. want to be that parent, the one that they don't want to go see. Right. So the lo I understand there's a lot of pressure, but again, it's not about the here and now. It's not about right now. It's about the long-term consequences. And so mm -hmm. you might have to limit your children hanging around with other kids who have unhealthy behaviors right. or troubling behaviors. You might have to set limits on that. Mm -hmm. You might have to set limits on the amount of time they watch TV or play video games. Right. Because the more they're doing that, the less productive they are in their mm -hmm. lives. And so that's not good for them either. Right. Uh, you might have to set limits in terms of they have to complete their chores before they can do the fun things that mm -hmm. they want to do. Or they right. have to complete their homework before they do the fun things. Mm -hmm. And so teaching them that responsibilities come first, mm -hmm. chores and work come first, and then we can relax. And right. if you think about that in terms of the long term, Mm -hmm. uh, growing up to be adults, you know, they've learned, okay, I have to work Monday through Friday, right. and then the weekends we can have fun. Exactly. You know, so you're really training them uh, mm -hmm. for, for a lifetime worth of, of good habits by yeah. doing that. You're giving them structure, and I like that we're not talking about punishment, but I see discipline. Discipline comes along with consequences. Mm -hmm. So if we're living a disciplined life, we're likely to have positive consequences. But when we don't have the discipline, the structure in our lives, then it's likely to have negative consequences. And I think parents also struggle with, um, well, I want to discipline my child in an appropriate way and tell them you're spending too much time on video games. It's time to put the video games away. But then that also means I have to go back later and monitor to make sure yes. they're not doing the video games. And we hear parents say, well, by this time I'm preparing dinner, I'm doing laundry. So it's just so much to do. 
But if we start to do this now, teach our children discipline, structure of how to live their lives, then it will follow them for the rest of their lives. And it is, it's, it's a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. But again, going back to the, like if we say, you know, we know it's easier to change behavior if we start a new behavior to right. replace that instead mm -hmm. of just not doing something. Mm -hmm. It's hard to just not do something. So right. in terms of training children and, and teaching them, uh, you might say no video games until mm -hmm. eight o'clock, but you might have to point them to what they can do instead. Mm -hmm. So instead of just saying, you know, don't do this anymore, you're only limited to one hour, uh, well, then what am I going to do? Maybe right. they don't have any other ideas about mm -hmm. what they can do. So giving them some suggestions on what they can do with the rest of that time mm -hmm. could be very helpful for them. Definitely. Like, well, how about you come in the kitchen and help me prepare mm -hmm. this meal? Because that's a great way to teach them how to cook. Or why don't you come and help me do the laundry? At some point in time, you hope your kids are off on their own and these are all things they're going to have to do. But I think that's an excellent point. If you're going to say don't do something for a certain amount of time, then replace it with something that's acceptable and valuable and that will serve them well later on in life. And the other point I'd like to make about this <coughs> is, is we don't want to discipline them in anger or when our very emotions important. are very high. Yeah. Because we can get, you know, we don't make our best decisions when we're that way. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, what we know is that the more emotional we are, the more emotional our brain is, the less right. logical we are. They mm -hmm. kind of like a seesaw, they go opposite each other. When the emotions right. are high, <laughs> the logic gets low. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's very important that whenever we're doing this and making decisions and teaching them and all mm -hmm. of these other things, that we're not doing it with anger and irritation and some mm -hmm. of those other emotions. Right. And, you know, I, I, I worked with someone one time and, and it was, it, it, the, the, the woman thought that she had to discipline the child Mm -hmm. immediately when something happened right. and she didn't want to do it alone so she'd call her husband at work he was at work there's nothing he could do about it from there right. and they would kind of get irritated with each other and it was so it's, it was important for them to learn you don't have to address it right now in exactly. the moment you can say to the child you know let me think about this mm -hmm. when your father gets home we're both going to talk about it and mm -hmm. we'll decide what the consequence is for this behavior and that mm -hmm. gives you time between the behavior and your response to think it through logically right. and come up with a good solution. Yeah, it gives you time to calm down and breathe. Um, it also gives you time to consult with someone else who may really mm -hmm. have a great idea of how to handle it because when we address it in anger and we're extremely emotional, all the kids get is the anger and all the emotions That's all behind they can it. See. They don't get the message you're trying to give to them. And sometimes whenever you're disciplining in anger, and it's, I'm talking about the punishment aspect right. of it now, um, we punish and, and really angry and the punishment comes out to be really severe. You can't watch right. TV for a month. You know, exactly. I mean, that's really going to be very difficult mm -hmm. to do and it's going to be hard for the kids and hard for you. And so right. you begin to have a, a more measured response. You don't come up with a really drastic... The consequences you know, actually yes. fit the action or right. the behavior. Yeah, I, just recently um, someone said to me that their kid was going to be punished for the summer for something he did during the school year, but all summer long he could not play video games. And I said... Look, I understand these are your children, but let me make a suggestion. If you punish a child for the whole summer from video games, that child is eventually going to be, begin to think, well, I'm punished anyway, and it's the whole summer, so I may as well do whatever negative behavior it was anyway, because what I like doing is already taken from me for That's a whole right. summer. And that person just looked at me, but a week later she came back and said, I talked that over with my husband and what you said made sense. Mm -hmm. So we're taking it away for two weeks and we're going to assign him to go to the library so he can learn the things he didn't get that school year. Okay, so. and that's an important part too mm -hmm. because it's not just about punishment. You punish them, but what did they learn? Exactly. You know, if, if that was tied to a behavior in school, mm -hmm. what was the behavior and what does he have to learn to correct that? Right. And is he going to learn that by just not playing video games? And exactly. that's, that's kind of the reasoning process or the thoughts that we want mm -hmm. people to go through. What did right. they do? What do they have to learn to change that? Uh -huh. And is this punishment or this response going to teach them what they need to know to do something different next time. Right. It's so important, really important. 
Um, and you also have a suggestion, a really good book for not only fathers, but anybody who wants to be a better parent to read. So tell us a little bit about that Yeah, book. most of the things we talked about have come from this book. It's called Purpose Driven Fathers, okay. and it's by Andrick Biddle. And you okay. can get this on Amazon. It's really mm -hmm. inexpensive, but it goes And probably in the library oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, probably so. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very... Um, helpful ideas and it'll go into all of these things a little bit more in, okay. in depth than what we've been able to co cover them here. Okay. But uh, all of these points are from there so you get a good idea about what you'll be reading about if you decide you want to read more about it. Okay. This is a, such a great resource and such a great topic. So thank you so much for bringing it You're to welcome. us today. Thank you. And thanks to you our viewers for spending your time with us for this episode of Ascension Counseling Center's video newsletter. Remember, you can catch replays of the program exclusively on Ascension 21 on the days and times listed on your screen and anytime on Ascension 21's YouTube channel. We hope today's information will help change your life for the better. That's our goal at Ascension Counseling Center for our programs to help change lives. Remember, Ascension Counseling Center is here by way of your support. We're funded by a two mill property tax millage, which means that $2 from every $1,000 you pay in taxes goes to support our agency so we can provide free and low cost mental health and substance abuse outpatient services to residents of Ascension. We're located in Gonzales at 1112 Southeast Ascension Complex Boulevard. It's off Worthy Road across from the courthouse and next to the health unit. You can reach us by calling 225-450-1016. You can also find us on the web at ascensionparish.net forward slash mh and on Facebook at Ascension Counseling Center. You can also hear us on KKAY AM 1590 every Tuesday from 10 to 1030 a.m. Thanks for your support and until next time from everyone at Ascension Counseling Center, thank you for watching. <music>